Okay, now we've got our USB drive prepared. We plug it into our server, connect our HB card, and obviously all of our drives, and then we want to power our server on. We'll need to boot to the USB drive, so if you don't boot to USB by default, you'll have to go into your motherboard and change those settings. Those settings vary from motherboard manufacturer to motherboard manufacturer. Okay, now that I have booted to my EFI shell, as I'm using an EFI based motherboard, just have to zoom in, hopefully give you a slightly better view of this. Okay, we can see from the information on the screen that we have FS0. FS0 is actually going to be a removable drive because BLK1, 0, 1, 2 and 3 are the four hard drives that are currently connected to this SAS card. So the first thing we need to do is change to FS0 by typing FS0 colon. Now if I do a DIR, we will see what's on our USB drive. With that in mind, we have to get the information for our SAS card, or SAS ID effectively. To get this information, we do sas to flash .efl. So we type sas to flash .efi, rather. And then we do dash list all. And give it a moment. Okay, drive card zero, or card zero rather than drive zero. So we need that for the next command. So we can confirm the details of that card by doing sas to flash dot efl dash c space zero for card zero. dash list. Okay, there's our SAS address there, so we'll give it a moment to finish. You need to take a note of that SAS address, as it will be required later on. Once you've taken a note of that, take a picture of it with your phone if you can, write it down as well, it's always good to have a backup. Now what we're going to do is we're going to erase the firmware on the SAS card. So to do that, we use SAS to flash. .efi dash o for output dash e for empty and 6 now I'm joking about the dash o and dash e I don't actually know what they stand for I just know that this works Okay, so as you'll have noticed, it says uh, the last two commands are SAS to flash, reconnect the EFI driver, please wait, and then fail reconnect the EFI driver. This has happened every time I've used this, however, it seems to work just fine. So now we need to load the first part of the firmware. In order to do that, again, SAS to flash dot EFI dash O, again for output or overwrite. Dash F for force. And if we just press 6, it will give us a 6 gigabit psas.fw. And hit return. Okay, so it didn't like the dash command F. Interesting, running it again appears to actually be working. That's the original command that had failed. Don't know what went wrong there. All I've done was rerun the original flash command. Okay, so apparently the firmware updated, but rebooting the adapter failed. That's fine, we can reboot the system to simulate that. So I'm just going to hit the reset button on the server. Okay, then we'll change the FS0 again. Now we need to load the IT firmware. So we'll do that with sas to flash .efl, EFI rather. I don't like it saying EFL. Dash O, dash F, and then 
It's 2118. That's IR. That's the IT one I'm looking for. So let's say 2118 IT.bin. Hit return. Okay, it's telling me the product ID and vendor ID do not match. I'm asking if I want to continue anyway. It does say that the firmware is compatible with the controller and has a valid checksum, so I'm going to say yes. Again, it's trying to reset my adapter. It will probably fail. Which it did. So again, to reset the adapter, I'm going to reboot the system. Okay, again, going to change to FS0. Oh, CLS to move the screen. SAS to flash dot EFI space dash O dash SAS add. And now I need my SAS ID. Let me just grab that from my phone. You don't use the dashes with this software. He says put the dashes in. Okay, now we can check our SAS address again. Does it remember the previous commands? No, it doesn't. Okay. So it's SAS to flash to UFI, dash C0, dash list. That may not work because of the capitals. Let's find out. And there we go. My SAS address has now been programmed. The version of the firmware is SAS 92118i. Rather for the product ID. Everything there seems correct. So we should now be flashed to IT mode. I'm now about to test Unread on the system. And I'll be able to show you whether or not it actually worked. If we look inside the dashboard, we can actually see that we have all four of our drives currently connected to our HBA installed. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback on this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.